Hi, welcome for coming. Uh, uh, <laughs> welcome and thank you for coming. Um, we're going to talk about securing your Heroku applications. Uh, my name is Matthew Conway. I'm a lead product security engineer uh, at Salesforce. First off, I want to uh, let you know that you should only make uh, purchasing decisions and stock purchases um, of uh, Salesforce based on uh, what we say we offer today. Um, I'll discuss one beta feature in this talk, but otherwise everything else is, is publicly known um, released features. So with that out of the way, uh, to really get something out of this talk, uh, you ought to know where Heroku is at least. Uh, hopefully you've used it. Um, I'm going to do the show of hands thing. Do you know what Heroku is? Yeah? Some nods? Some yeah, great. Um, it's OK if you don't know what it is and, and, and you feel like maybe you're in the wrong place. I, I won't be offended, even though the crowd's a little light. Um, but just in case you need a refresher, Heroku is a cloud application platform. So you can you know, build a, an application in any language that you're comfortable with, um, deliver it to Heroku, uh, monitor for performance, and uh, scale that out as, as your business grows and as your site becomes more popular. But we take a lot of the headaches out of it for you. So um, you know, we like to say that we're the, the, the fastest way to go from an idea to a URL for that idea. But you know, traditionally, as you're trying to get from that great idea that you just had, you know, um, talking to friends of yours, to getting it out there, um, making it real, getting some users, um, there's a lot of decisions that you need to make in that process. And we try to abstract away and, and simplify as many of those as we can while still giving you a great deal of control. And the bottom line for us is to allow you to focus on delivering an experience that, that your customers enjoy, uh, and, and we take care of the rest. Here's a little quote from a, a Gartner report. Through 2020, 95% of cloud security failures will be the customer's fault, which might sound a little ominous or mean. It's an interesting quote. Um, but what's implied there is that increasingly today, uh, you're going to be using somebody else's infrastructure as a service or a platform as a service like Amazon, Azure, Heroku. Uh, if you're still running everything in uh, a first party data center, perhaps everything is your responsibility all the way down to um, there's a fire in the data center. Does that go out properly? Anybody who's in that room that can go and touch your server, uh, are they supposed to be there? Uh, all the way up to what Amazon takes care of in the stack and what Heroku does as well. But that still leaves your application code, so um, we don't write the applications for you. They need to be secure. And we also can't guarantee or, or force you to take advantage of all of our security features and, and do it in, in the right way. So that's sort of what this talk is about. Uh, we're not going to delve into application code security. Uh, we have a bunch of other great talks that, that touch on that. Uh, but we'll show you the security features that the Heroku platform offers um, for a range of use cases and, and tell you how you can uh, make proper use of them. So at the start, um, you're going to have some, uh, some high-level uh, decisions you need to make about how you're going to use the Heroku platform that are based on uh, you know, the, the type of organization that you're in, um, whether you have uh, compliance mandates. Um, maybe you have da uh, data residency um, concerns as well. So over in the, in the runtime deployment model, that's where we're talking about whether you have your application running in our common runtime, which is highly multi-tenant. Um, that's going to be less expensive. And uh, the private spaces uh, are more isolated. And if you're familiar with AWS concepts, it's your own VPC. Uh, as part of that private space. So there's a greater degree of isolation, and it's not only more predictable performance, um, but it's greater security as well. Um, all the way on up to our Heroku Shield uh, de deployment model, which is private spaces, but further locked down if you have uh, compliance mandates that you need to think about. Um, for pro uh, Heroku Postgres, so you're probably going to store some data um, coming off of the application that, that you're deploying to Heroku. You need to think about the, the plan that, that's most appropriate for your application as well. Um, standard is going to be like the common runtime. That's going to be more multi-tenant. 
less expensive. Maybe you use that for development, uh, test like CI environment, um, or staging. On up to private, which again is greater isolation for your data, um, predictable performance, um, greater security, and uh, Shield is further locked down as well. And then of course with region, this may or may not uh, matter to you. Maybe it matters for uh, latency reasons. Your customers are just closer to Ireland, so you want to have your, your application running there. Or uh, you have a specific requirement to keep your application and data uh, from your customers, data about your customers, all in Germany. Something to consider. So of all the features that we're going to cover today, they kind of fall into three buckets on our journey uh, of blazing a trail to secure our Heroku apps. Um, we're going to talk about user access configurations, uh, network access configurations, and some more advanced security settings that you may or may not want to take advantage of. Uh, the first feature that we offer that I, I, I can't strongly uh, recommend this enough is two-factor authentication. You can go, uh, once you've signed up for Heroku, you can go into the dashboard and, and turn this on and either get a, uh, a code sent to your, your cell phone every time you log in, or you can use an Authenticator app like Salesforce Authenticator, uh, Google Authenticator, Authy, there's a lot of them out there. Once you turn this on, anytime you try to log into the Heroku dashboard or, or use the command line it's, uh, and log in there, it's going to ask you for that second factor. Now, why would you do that? It seems inconvenient. Um, if you're not familiar, uh, you know, this is going to prevent someone who you know, knows your email address and, and maybe got your password from a list uh, from another site that was hacked, and, and you tend to reuse your passwords, which I don't recommend. Um, they would possibly have access to your Heroku account just like that. With a second factor of authentication, there's something else that they don't have of yours that's stopping them from, from being authorized to log in. So highly recommend that you enable that. For, uh, say, our more enterprise users, um, we offer single sign-on as well. We're compatible with uh, SAML 2.0 identity providers. You can connect this up with your Heroku Enterprise organization, and then anyone who, from your organization who needs to use Heroku, who you've said on your side is, is allowed to do that can then sign in without having to go through the sign-up process. Uh, yeah, very convenient. And, and it makes it easy for you to both turn on that access and, and revoke it if you need to do so, if you need to uh, roll somebody off your team. Um, once you've got your team all signed up, we have role-based access controls that kind of vary based on um, you know, where your organization is at. Have you chosen to just deploy one application and add collaborators? Do you have a Heroku team? Maybe you have an enterprise account with us. So it's going to vary a bit. But at the enterprise level, um, there's quite a lot that you can do. Um, you can, you know, for example, whitelist our add-ons, which we'll get into. Um, you have visibility into which of your users have uh, two-factor authentication enabled so that you can reach out to them and, and say, like, you know, please enable this or we're, we're going to boot you off. Um, you, this is also where you can manage single sign-on if you're um, an enterprise account uh, admin. This also contains uh, teams, many teams, and, and you can manage uh, permissions there as well. If you don't have that enterprise account and you just have a team, um, that still allows you to share applications, their pipelines, private spaces, and, and shared billing uh, across many different uh, collaborators. Um, but even if you're, if you're not at that uh, you know, level of complexity, you just have one app out there on Heroku, and you want somebody to jump on and, and take a look, maybe help you diagnose an issue, or maybe it's a, you know, a co-founder and it's really early days, you can just add them as a collaborator on the app. But this doesn't give you that, that great of a degree of control. So uh, you know, we just want to allow you to, to kind of choose your own adventure. Something that's pretty neat, um, Heroku Postgres credentials, uh, which is uh, what we call a wrapper, a level of abstraction over PostgreSQL, the database's uh, own access controls. We let you manage this through data.heroku.com and also through the command line without having to get into the psql console and without really having to know uh, the syntax of, uh, of all of those commands and, and get them right. Um, we give you high-level sort of uh, templates of user access if you just want to enable 
you know, read, read access on everything or read write or no access, no access at all at the time for some reason, you can do that uh, very simply. Um, the nice thing about this is that you can create multiple credentials for, like, say, there's the main credential for your application that it always has. Well, you can connect up another application to that that's, say, it has more of a reporting function. It doesn't really have any business having write access to that data. And uh, should something go wrong, maybe it could destroy the data. So you, you want to create a new credential for that other application that's read-only and then attach it. Anytime that credential needs to be updated, that automatically happens without your in intervention or on a schedule if you like. And um, you know, the, they're, you're reducing your risk in, in connecting that other application to that data set. But you can also use this to give out access to a person. Um, you know, again, in the case of just uh, needing to read the data and maybe uh, build some reports from it, you would want to uh, lock that access down as, as uh, tightly as you can. And uh, you know, if they're a contractor and they're only working with you for a limited engagement looking at your data, you can easily revoke that. And that's not going to impact any of the other credentials that you've, that you've issued for other apps and other people. So let's dive into network access configurations. Um, you can trust IP address ranges for your Heroku private space. That's if you have that greater uh, isolated uh, runtime environment. Um, let's say that you want to only allow access from within your corporate network to an application that you've built and have running in your Heroku private space. You can do that by finding out the IP address range for that corporate network and setting it in the dashboard. Uh, it's in beta right now, as I mentioned earlier, in the forward-looking statements bit. But um, you can restrict access in the same way to your data service, which is pretty cool. Also touched on uh, add-on waitlisting real quick earlier. So add-ons, you can think of these as a, sort of an app exchange for your, your running application. It could be something that helps you in, in development, in the management of the app, in getting insight into its performance. Um, but it could be an integral component like search or authentication. You know, it's up to you how you want to architect, uh, architect that. Heroku uh, offers several of those. Um, we, you know, I mentioned Heroku Postgres. We also offer Heroku Redis, Heroku Kafka. Uh, sorry, Apache Kafka for Heroku. Um, so it, it's great that we have this marketplace of nearly 200 different add-ons that you can plug in. But you know, depending on, uh, I guess, the maturity of your organization, that might not actually be desirable. Um, it's fine if you you know, want to do that on your own in, in development and you know, say, what's this add-on about, and test it on your own. But you know, when it comes to putting things in contact with, with production applications, um, you might not want to allow that, that degree of freedom. So you, you could say here that you only want to allow your developers to add Heroku Postgres to any application, or Heroku Redis, or um, you know, say, a, a scheduling add-on that, that your company's uh, IT department's already vetted and approved. Um, that's a nice option to have. OK, so we're going to get into a little bit more into some of the specifics that you may or may not want to take use, make use of. First of those is VPC peering. So earlier I said that the Heroku private space underlying that, it has an Amazon uh, VPC. Suppose you already have one of those, or for some reason your architecture dictates that you need to have one outside of Heroku. We don't know. We want to make that you know, possible, if that makes sense for you. You could have uh, you know, servers running out in that other VPC. You could have data stores there. This allows you to create a one-to-one -one, uh, secure connection between that VPC and your private space. And it can even do this across regions if, if you need to do that. We also offer some advanced logging options uh, for Heroku Shield, which is that, um, that compliance-focused runtime model. Um, mainly, these are you know these came into being because you know some of our customers have specific regulatory requirements. If you don't have them, you might not want to use these. Um, one of the nice features is uh, capturing all of the commands that are entered when one of your developers opens a console to your application. So, you know, let's say for some reason uh, you know somebody is about to leave the company and and they're a disgruntled employee, and um, the way they they want to uh, get you back before they go is is uh, log in to the application console and destroy some data. Unfortunately, 
Well, it would help uh, a, t a great deal to be able to say that was so-and-so that did it, and here are the commands they ran, so that you can immediately tell that apart from uh, a, maybe a broader attack or something of that sort. And you also have the evidence to take appropriate action. Um, we funnel a lot of different logs from the private space, from, from just the network itself, the application, and that depends on <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> your framework and any custom logging that you're doing uh, from the app. And there are also logs coming out of the database as well. Um, we can funnel that all to the same place so that you can analyze it later, store it. Um, maybe you need to, say, keep, the, keep those logs for up to five years or you know, whatever the case may be. You can send these off to your seam, like send them to Splunk, or connect up one of our third-party add-ons that I mentioned, like Sumo Logic, LogDNA, and they'll do uh, additional storage and analysis for you. So that's pretty easy. You just add the, the URL for the destination that's expecting your logs, and uh, you're good to go. So that's it. Um, these are all the, the features I wanted to share with you today that, uh, you know, depending on your use case, highly recommend that you take, uh, take advantage of. Um, I have some resources here for you to check out. Um, Aparoku.com, we just have a few pages to give you some more information about, you know, if you're still a little unsure about all of what we offer, um, if you want to know more about Teams, if you want to know more about enterprise level uh, usage and the private spaces that I mentioned. And the Dev Center is also our knowledge base, our, our place where you can find all the documentation about how to use Heroku, how to use it well. Um, highly recommend you check that out. Um, fun fact, Heroku is, is not a real word, which you might have known. Um, it's actually a combination of uh, hero and, and haiku. Um, so I wrote a little haiku to kind of drive home the message of this, uh, of this talk. And that is, uh, security is a shared effort between us, so please play your part. Thank you.